Welcome back to another video in our Typo3 Editor tutorial series. Today we will be talking about pages and how to use them. If you have not watched our How to Navigate Typo3 tutorial, we highly recommend you watch that video first. There is a link for it in the top right and the description below. Let's get started. There are different types of pages, but for this video we will focus on standard pages. Creating a standard page is simple. The easiest way to do so is to go to the top left right above your page tree. Then, by dragging and dropping the standard page icon in the desired location, you have created a new page. This is what it looks like. The same method is used when relocating pages. To move a page, drag and drop it in the desired location. If you drop a page between two existing pages, as I have, it will be moved to the same level. However, if you drop the page onto another page, it will become a subpage of the page you just dropped it in. Another way to create a page is to copy an existing one. This is often beneficial if there are many elements that your pages share. By copying an existing page, you will then only need to edit elements that you wish to be different to the original page, while already having the elements set up that are shared across the multiple pages. Copying a page is also helpful when you want to make changes to an existing page, but don't want your front end users seeing changes being made while you work on the page in the back end. By default, all copied pages are disabled. This means that while the page exists and is readily accessible in the back end, the page is not visible to the front-end user. To put it into simpler terms, any visitors to your website will not be able to go onto a disabled page. Important to note when copying a page that you intend on replacing the original with is to change the URL segment, or slug, on the copied page to reflect that of the original. To change the slug, go to the page in question, click Page Properties, Click on Toggle Manual URL Segment and then replace the existing URL segment with that of the page you are replacing. Remember also to enable the new page so that it is visible on the front end. We will discuss this setting further later in the video. To copy a page, right click on the page you would like to copy in the page tree and select Copy. To paste, right click on the page that is located before where you would like the new page to exist and select Paste After. If you have placed the page into an incorrect position, you can always move it. This is also done by dragging and dropping the page in the desired location. Important to note is that new or copied pages will always be disabled until you enable them. Disabled pages can be distinguished by the red icon over the page icon. As mentioned, disabled pages will not show on the front end. To enable a page, right click on the disabled page and click Enable. Also remember to correctly name your new or copied page. This is done by clicking on the page you'd like to rename and navigating to the title section at the top of the page in the page view and selecting the pencil icon next to the title. Once renamed, you can hit enter to save it or click the save icon towards the right. Next, let's talk about page properties and how to actually find them. The page properties are a menu in which you can change many attributes. To find the page properties, you click on the edit page properties icon above the title of the page. It is the middle icon, the one that resembles a page with a pencil overlaid. Once in the page properties, you can change many things. I will now go over some of the more commonly used attributes. In the general tab, you can edit the URL segment. This field is important because it provides a path to the page. If you link another page to this page and then change the slug of this page, the other page will no longer be able to locate this page. This is because the instructions given to the other page do not include the correct path to the page you're linking to, as that path was changed when editing the slug. Therefore, you need to take care when editing the slug and make sure that any links are always up to date. 
As mentioned at the start of the video, the slug is also something you need to edit when replacing a page with another page. The SEO, or Search Engine Optimization tab. Here you can edit the page title and description as they appear in a web search. Well-optimized content will rank better in a search, meaning your website will gain more traffic or people that visit your store. The Appearances tab. Here you can change the way the page looks on the back end. To give you some context, when you are on a page, elements are laid out in a grid fashion. These layouts can vary greatly between different pages and websites. For example, the home page only shows full width elements. This page, however, has a full width layout at the top and a split column layout towards the bottom of this page. This layout can be changed in the Appearances tab. Moving on, the Access tab. Here you can enable and disable the page as well as enable or disable the page to be shown in menus on the front end. Here is an example of the page being enabled in menus. And here is an example of it being disabled. As you can see, the services title no longer appears in our menu. To delete a page, right click on the page in the page tree and select delete. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. Please consider subscribing to stay up to date with our tutorials.